everyone. Thanks for joining us for this week's Weather Extra. I'm meteorologist Jillian Grace. Thursday, May 11th, marked the 70th anniversary of the deadly EF5 tornado that ripped through Waco back in 1953. This twister goes down in the record books as the first official F5 tornado and holds the somber title of the deadliest tornado in Texas history since 1900, killing 114 people and injuring nearly 600. Our very own the chief meteorologist Brady Taylor and a team of others put together an hour long documentary monster from the sky that looks back at the tornado and shares some of the stories from those that survived it. Monster from the sky debuted Thursday, but if you missed it, you still have a chance to watch. You can scan the QR code right there on your screen right now. and It'll take you directly to the documentary on our website, or you can go to our website yourself to watch by visiting kwtx.com slash Waco tornado. Our team here at KWTX have featured different stories on the number of historical landmarks damaged by the tornado and also shared more on what life was like for some living in that time. And on this episode of Weather Extra, we're here to share those stories with you today. We begin our coverage of Weather Extra with the man who was just six years old at the time, waiting for his dad to come home from the square after the twister hit. Here's Lauren Westbrook with the story. <laughs> I was six barbers that have cut my hair since I was about eight years old. Melvin London's barbers all have ties to the Jockey Club in East Waco. <laughs> Taking care of his hair and his spirit. A shop forced to rebuild after a monster from the sky destroyed the original location 70 years ago, not far from where London's father worked at the Texas Seed Company. I was only six and a half years old, but my father worked close to where the tornado hit. That's why I'm familiar with May 11th, 1953. London was one of 16 children in a four bedroom house in Falls County, celebrating his mother's birthday, waiting for dad to come home. We just thought it was a rainstorm. That was it. Little did they know a deadly tornado was forming miles away. Memories from London's childhood come back as he takes us through photos lining the walls of the Waco Convention Center. Texas Seed Company was right in the middle, right over there by Mary Street. There was no television in our household. There was a radio. We didn't have good communications to anything outside of our homes. So we were just playing in the rain and in, in the mud. He can still remember the relief that washed over him when dad walked through the door safe. We respected our dad. He was the king in our castle. So yes, it was really something to see my dad come home. Joy shifted to grief as his family made the usual trip to Waco for the weekend. We saw the devastation. That's the memory that I have for it. And slowly and slowly they cleaned up the blocks and then some of the business reopened. Some never did, some were replaced by other businesses. The square, as London's family and many others called it back then, was gone. Oh, as you can imagine, it was during a segregated time and, and black people met where they felt more comfortable. And they, it was common for us to meet around the square, especially coming from, I, I used to pull cotton. On Saturday, we celebrated because we had made a little money. We came to town and everybody walking up and down the streets with their bags in their hands and bragging about what they bought and so forth and we uh, get our haircuts, get our shoes shined. Decades later, London and his friends remember the lives lost and the damage left behind in the square 
on May 11th, but they also celebrate the progress in East Waco. In God's own good time, it has grown and the black businesses are starting to thrive and things are just looking up better than it was before. Lauren Westbrook, News 10. As we know, and just like you heard, Thursday, May 11th, marked 70 years since the deadly tornado plowed through Waco. The city remembered this tragedy with a special anniversary ceremony. And News 10's Chantel Rock was there and has more on what went on Thursday. Chantel. On May 11th, 1953, a devastating EF5 tornado ripped through downtown Waco. Today, community members gathered 70 years later, placing these white flowers into vases in front of the memorial statue here on Austin and 4th Avenues to commemorate and honor the lives lost. Sounds of taps Thursday morning as community members gathered to commemorate the 70 year anniversary of the 1953 Waco tornado. Waco's story is one of resilience, renewal, and a community that can come back stronger than ever, no matter what happens. The toll from this catastrophic event was profound and heartbreaking. 600 members of our community were injured, and we still mourn the loss of 114 precious lives. To remember those lives, Waco City Council members laid a wreath and placed white carnations in front of the memorial statue as honor guards with the Waco Fire and Police Departments performed a flag folding ceremony. One attendee, a Waco native who was just 14 years old when the tornado hit, remembers that harrowing day in vivid detail. I was at 8th and Austin. I'd come down and went in the Stratton Stricker building. Seven of us stayed behind the staircase and all of us will thank the good Lord for that. And now looking back years later, Willis is reminded of how this tragic day in Waco's history has shaped it into the resilient city it is today. Today, as we stand shoulder to shoulder, united in our commitment to each other and to our community, we honor the past and embrace the present and march boldly toward the future. Buckets of flowers will remain in front of the memorial statue downtown all day Thursday, allowing those interested to pay their respects to the lives lost 70 years ago. In Waco, Chantel Rapp, KWTX News 10. Right after this quick break, we hear from Pete Souza about one of the historical landmarks that was destroyed in the tornado and learn more about how it was brought back to life for us to enjoy today. But before we go to break, here's a clip from the documentary Monster from the Sky. What a terrific task. Something which only happens in a lifetime. The first tornado in the history of Waco, Texas. And it had to enter the very heart of the city at a time when the people were thronging within the building. Welcome back to Weather Extra. There are many stories from the fateful day when the tornado struck that showed the power of people coming together, all working with one another to help each other and the city of Waco get through that devastating time. One of the rallying points, a ballpark on Webster Avenue that's been brought back to life with the help of a few baseball icons. Pete Souza has a story from the silos. The devastation and death left in the wake of the tornado that struck Waco on May 11th, 1953 is of course what ended up in the history books, and for good reason. A city completely demolished, the lives of 114 meeting a tragic end. But some of the stories lost in the rubble are those of people rebuilding lives and storied structures rising from the ashes. One of those was a ballpark that featured a star-studded roster of performers and politicians paying visits. In 1904, they start building it. 1905, it's completed just in time for Teddy Roosevelt to come through on the train. Katie Park was named for its close proximity to Katie Railroad, which came through just next to the venue. Stephen Sloan, a Baylor history professor and the host of the Waco History Podcast, has traced all the history that stopped along the railroad to make monumental moments at the ballpark. A, a number of notable people uh, have come through and spent time in this park. Jesse Owens uh, came through and did a clinic here. Joe Lewis, he had an exhibition fight here and an important announcement about his retirement occurred in Waco. Uh, as everybody tells Babe Ruth, uh, Lou Gehrig, the 1929 Yankees came and played 
against what was the Waco Cubs then. That was the, that was the team that was in town. Ruth and Gehrig are immortalized at the ballpark, once demolished by that tornado in 1953. Thanks to the folks at Magnolia Silos, who reopened the field as a wiffle ball park in the fall of 2020. The field is located exactly where it was more than a century ago, at 701 Webster Avenue. Home plate is where home plate has always been. But what about the day in 1953 when that tornado touched down in Waco? There were no deaths at Katy Park that day. That We had deaths in other areas of the city and, of course, specifically downtown. But uh, there weren't any deaths here, but the park was lost. There was irony in some of that survival. After park owner A.H. Kirksey and the Waco Pirates manager sought shelter as disaster struck just before a game. And so even though the stadium was demolished with the tornado, uh, they ran and they got under uh, one of the cars uh, on the rails of this adjoining rail line and they, they survived the tornado. He had hated that train. Can you imagine, uh, I mean, trying to run amusements with that train right next door to your stadium? And so this t train was a problem if you're trying to develop this as a place of entertainment, but it ended up saving his life. Yeah. With the city in shambles, Kirksey remained committed to rebuilding Katy Park, pouring more than $400,000 into making a more modern stadium. The following season, magic for a city in need of a miracle. They rebuild a much more modern and improved facility, and really an amazing season happens in 1954. So great tragedy in 1953. In 1954, the team goes 105 and 42. I mean, they have an incredibly successful season, and so it's really the height of uh, baseball in Texas, in Waco to date. Did this Katy Park? become a rallying point for a city that had been devastated by this tornado? You can only imagine as downtown is still in shambles in 1954 and uh, all the structures that were destroyed, all the lives that are lost in 1953 in the tornado, how important this place becomes for the community to rally around the success of that team. And so yeah, the victory in 1954 was tremendously satisfying for the city. The sport of baseball took a tumble in the years after the resurrection of the park. And in 1957, attendance dwindled to the point where baseball left the city and the park eventually fell into disrepair. But today, this field of dreams stands strong and the legacy of legends like Ruth and Gehrig live on, just like the spirit of the city that once used baseball to cope with tragedy. In Waco, Pete Souza. KWTX News 10. Coming up next on Weather Extra, we dive more into some of the other historic landmarks in downtown Waco that survived the 1953 tornado and still stand strong today. Before the commercial break, here's another sneak peek from Monster from the Sky. We turned and went back down to 5th Street and headed over to Webster. Only got to the railroad tracks when the headlights would no longer penetrate the darkness. It had just gotten black. And headlights, I, I mean, how does the atmosphere get so thick that your headlights don't penetrate? The deadly Waco tornado destroyed over 600 homes and businesses and damaged over 1,000, including the Dr. Pepper bottling plant, which we now know as the Dr. Pepper Museum. News 10's Chantal Rob spoke with the associate director of the museum about how the museum's destruction and eventually rebuilding has left a lasting mark on the Waco community. Chantal. The Dr. Pepper Museum a beloved Waco landmark with deep roots to the central Texas city. Dr. Pepper was invented here in Waco in 1885. The invention occurred at the Old Corner Drug Store, which was located at the corner of 4th and Austin Avenue. But the building it now calls home wasn't always a museum. This building was built in 1906 as a bottling facility for the Artesian Manufacturing and Bottling Company and their national headquarters. That's until May 11, 1953, when a deadly EF5 tornado with winds up to 260 miles per hour tore through downtown Waco, ripping off a portion of the building's second floor. On the outside of the building, you'll see what's known as the scar, which is where the tornado 
took off the corner of the building and then they rebuilt it with similar color brick, but it didn't match perfectly. Despite taking just a week to repair, Summer Smith says the building eventually closed in the 1960s after the bottle company relocated leaving it vacant for decades. Um, eventually, in 1985, a group of citizens around the 100th anniversary of Dr. Pepper's invention uh, got together and uh, began to work on a dream of turning the old building into a museum. And by 1991, they had done that. The launch of the museum jump-started a revitalization movement in what was a quiet downtown Waco at the time, Summer Smith says. The city was really using this project as a way to bring excitement back downtown, um, that there's something here for people for people to do. And with each restoration project it undergoes, like a new roof earlier this year, the museum continues to bring that same amount of excitement while paying homage to its rich history. We do have an exhibit about the 1953 Waco tornado. In our exhibit, we trace the path of the tornado and, and its impact on those neighborhoods and communities that it passed through. In Waco, Chantal Rapp, KWTX News 10. And the Alico building is an iconic Waco landmark, but it's not just a beautiful backdrop. It withstood the test of time, including the deadly 1953 tornado. News 10's Alex Fulton takes us downtown for the story of how the Alico building survived, even serving as a place for relief efforts in the days and weeks after the storm. Alex. The tornado went smack dab through here. Along and around Austin Avenue, you'll now find a growing food scene and new apartment buildings. It's a far cry of what once stood here in the months and years after the 1953 tornado. The area around it was almost like a tornado kill zone. I mean, its worst areas were right there along 4th, 5th Street, Franklin and Austin. In the heart of downtown Waco, while new buildings have since replaced the destroyed ones, one building still stands to tell the tale. It's a tale local author Bradley T. Turner also tells in his multiple books. Turner says the reason the Alico building is still standing is because of its construction. Think of it a little bit like if you were imagining the story of the three little pigs, where you have them built out of sticks, built out of straw, built out of steel or brick in that case. Crews started laying steel and brick when construction first began in 1911. They were able to build this 20 story, uh, 22 story skyscraper in one year that withstood this F5 tornado. 42 years later, when the tornado hit, some say the skyscraper swayed up to it several inches, while others say it swayed six feet. You can see why it survived, because it moved, swayed 10 inches or so, I've heard from accounts. Uh, office furniture was sliding back and forth. While the Alico swayed and stood, other buildings swayed and fell, never to be rebuilt again, even now, 70 years later. There's a reason these areas are parking lots now. What does stand in downtown Waco today is a historical marker remembering the 1953 tornado that forever changed this area. Uh, you have to imagine this almost like a war zone at the time. And out of everything going on in all the chaos, what's still proudly standing right there in the heart of downtown Waco, but Waco's Goliath. In Waco, Alex Fulton, KWTX News 10. Coming up ahead on Weather Extra, we hear from some of the survivors that were featured in Monster from the Sky. Stick with us. Welcome back to Weather Extra. Hopefully you were able to watch the highly anticipated debut of Monster from the Sky that aired on KWTX Thursday, marking 70 years after the devastating tornado. News 10's Madison Herbert spoke with some of the survivors featured in that documentary. She joins us in studio with more on their reaction after seeing their stories on the big screen. Madison. Carolyn Keene and Mary Chapman can remember May 11th, 1953, like it happened yesterday. Today, they look back on the devastation, but also celebrate how far Waco has come. I think it's wonderful. After hours of interviews with fancy cameras, lights, and months of waiting, a documentary transported survivors of the historic Waco tornado back in time to 1953. Just brought everything back, and then to watch everybody go in, you know, and, and work so hard. 
you know, to get people out. It's well worth to have to spend the time and energy to do it because now people will have a chance to see what really happened that day. And a beam dropped. Carolyn Keene played one part in telling a much bigger story. Seeing how her experience and others became one was emotional. Well, I loved hearing the rest of the story and everybody else, like the ladies whose dad rode down the side of the building. That's amazing. For Mary Chapman, it was a no-brainer to attend the pre-screening of Monster from the Sky Tuesday night, even though she was injured. I had fallen. They said I had five fractures of my pelvis. Seeing the documentary was her motivation in recovery. I'm glad I had something to look forward to. Survivors determined to carry on the chronicles of that daunting day in Waco's history. There are a lot of people that don't remember. I remember all of that. But Brady did a good, he, he did a good thing, and this will live on forever. It was described at that time as the monster from the sky, and I think that's an accurate description of it. If you missed the documentary, don't worry, you are still able to go and watch it over on our website, kwtx.com. Reporting in the studio, Madison Herber, News 10. We hope you enjoyed this week's Weather Extra as we look back 70 years ago when the first official F5 and deadliest tornado in Texas history struck a downtown Waco. Again, don't forget to check out Monster from the Sky, the hour-long documentary Chief Meteorologist Brady Taylor worked very hard on for the past year. You can watch the documentary by scanning the QR code right here behind me or go to our website just like you heard Madison saying, kwtx.com slash Waco Tornado. That's all we have for you today on Weather Extra. We'll see you next weekend.